So if you love Kill Team and you've been watching any of the news surrounding different tournaments, you've probably noticed that there have actually been some compendium teams going out and winning tournaments, which is awesome to see. As somebody who has played the Kill Team compendium since the start of the edition and actually love the simplicity in the list building and rather lets me focus on the game itself, I want to tell you about a team that people are sleeping on right now from me taking my local gaming stores and local tournaments as well. If you haven't had a chance though, please feel free to go ahead and gently touch that subscribe and like button just to let me know that you like this content and feel free to comment with other teams you might find or builds around this team I tell you about. So without further ado, let me tell you that Tactical Marine Squad is the best Space Marine team out of the compendium. And here's why. Now since the beginning of the edition, the nice thing with the Tactical Marine Squad is you are allowed to bring six operators. It's been this way before any FAQs came out, and honestly I think this is what allowed it to be the framework for the edition. Doing this allows you to bring 18 APL to the table without any kind of updates. And yes, the other Space Marines have caught up allowing you to have a sixth operative on there, but this was the real OG. Furthermore, the Tactical Marine Squad had the most custom ability into the list itself, so if you're somebody who likes to bring different special weapons, different heavy weapons, or different loadouts for your operators like your sergeant, this one allowed you to do so. You have the most flexibility in this team, being able to have the six operators, and you can have the most punch thanks to you being able to bring multiple plasma weapons and the special heavy weapon as well, be it the heavy bolter or the missile launcher. Now your Tactical Sergeant is the most robust of all the data sheets for the Tactical Marine Squad, and honestly just the Marines in general. You can build them for multiple different scenarios and build him exactly what you need for the exact target you're facing. Me personally, I like to bring him as a close combat specialist being able to take opponents on on the front lines, but you can also build him as a range specialist using his combi weapons, giving you that little extra plasma or grav punch whenever you need it. Just know that when you use a combi weapon, yes you get the bolt gun indefinitely, but if you use the special weapon end of it, it's limited to one shot, so make it count. Now your Tactical Marine Gunner is your specialist on this team that utilizes different special weapons. There's a lot of good options on here. Me personally, I take the Plasma Gun for that unlimited range and be able to have the option to just do a standard shot or a supercharge when all else fails. The Melted Gun's a great option as well. You gotta consider using that as a close range weapon that if your opponent wants to get here, it's more of a deterrent. Having AP2, getting rid of most of your opponent's dice, and the Mortal Wound 4 on a critical is huge with the Melted Gun. And the Grav Gun's great that if you're going up against other marines or custodes, you'll have a much better time taking down your powered armored foes. The flamer it can be good, I personally don't use it, but having a ballistic skill of two up is pretty nice and that torrent to be able to go across multiple enemies can be good if you're going up against a lot of chaff, but even still, I like to bring one of the other options when I have the chance. Now while it's not a plasma totem gunner, the tactical marine heavy gunner is phenomenal because they do have two choices in the heavy bolter and the missile launcher, but they are pretty good options all in themselves and it gives you more than just a bolt gun. The missile launcher is phenomenal that if you want to have the versatility in your list and you're only bringing one heavy gunner, bring the missile launcher. It's great because the frag capability allows you to blast some of the other smaller chaff units and have a much better chance of doing so. Whereas the crack missile is great for taking down the heavily armored opponents. So having heavy AP1 is phenomenal for a special rule, but really that damage stat of 5-7, just like a power fist, is a good place to be at. Me personally though, I do like to take the heavy bolter for the simple fact that it does have five attacks to roll on. Um, it's ballistic skill and weapon skills th still three up. A four five damage characteristic is nothing to snuff about. Heavy full slots, that's all right too, I understand with it, but that P1 critical rule is phenomenal for being able to give you just that extra little tout of damage. And believe me, when you're rolling five dice, getting a critical is not that hard. Now you might look at the Tactical Marine Warrior and think, wow, look at this garbage, but I'm here to tell you that's not the case. Yes, they're pretty standard in their bolt gun and fist combo, but the damage of a 3-4 characteristic or the ballistic skill weapon skill 3-up is phenomenal. Where you really want to use the Tactical Marine Squad and make them the bread and butter of this is your Tactical Marine Warriors being the objective holders to move up on the board and harass units, to take the pressure off of your special gunners and your killers and utilize these guys to go, be move, shoot and then dash behind cover, move, pick up objective, or dash as well. They're great and utilize them well and you'll win more games. Now chances are my Tactical Marine squad looks a whole lot different than some other people. With permission from the internet such as YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, Tumblr, if people even go on there anymore, and a few other places, folks said it was okay to utilize Primaris Marines but utilize the Tactical Marine 
rules. For me, I thought this is the best of both worlds, so utilizing some sprue goo and leftover marine models that I had that I was not planning on using, I built up my kill team, Kill Team Spectre, for the Tactical Marine Squad. Now starting off my list is Sergeant Nero, the leader. Nero is equipped with a plasma pistol and a power sword. The biggest reason I went this route is the plasma pistol is phenomenal for being able to fire multiple plasma shots throughout the game rather than just one time like the combi plasma. Now, I'm a big fan of just utilizing it on the standard setting, giving AP 1 and doing pretty good damage, but when all else fails, bumping up and supercharging it really comes in clutch, especially whenever you utilize the Purity Seal equipment piece to re-roll some of those failed ones, helps you out. Furthermore, I gave him the power weapon instead of power fist or other options because I wanted to utilize the lethal 5-up roll. He is not here to necessarily kill people, granted 5-up does a pretty good job at that, but the lethal 5-up creates critical hits out of my 5s and 6s rather than just 6s, and helps make him a little bit more defensible going against other foes who might have a power fist or might have another weapon that does similar things. Brother Caiaphas is here as well. He is my plasma gunner. I utilize the Hellblaster weapon and body to actually make this model itself, and I utilize him like crazy for my gunner strats. Being able to shoot across the board using this special weapon is great, and again, just like the plasma pistol over on Nero, this plasma gun is just that much better at doing what it's supposed to. I also usually give him a purity seal just in case I happen to get some ones. Now I know I alluded to it earlier, but Brother Samson does carry the Heavy Bolter for my list. I like the Heavy Bolter's profile for having 5 shots to be able to fire off, and very easily do I get the critical rule of P1, bringing down the defense dice. Being able to split shots, which I do rarely, can be a nice tactical advantage against your horde armies, but overall I really do this so I can utilize Bolter Discipline. Using this Bolt weapon and being able to fire 10 shots rather than just 5 per turn is a phenomenal place to be for Brother Samson and the rest of the team. Now, my Tactical Marine Warriors are on the list, and they bring up the tail end here because I really focus a lot on my primary characters and the killers of the group. But a lot of times it can be pretty handy to be able to put equipment on these guys and turn them from zeros to heroes, such as frag, crack grenades, and auspects to make them that much better and kind of make them like specialists with just default armor and weapons. Your mileage may vary. So ploys are great. Strategic, you play during the strategy phase. Tactical, you play whenever it specifies. But there are only five you have to worry about for your tactical marines on the firstborn side. Your bolt of discipline is great that if you're choosing an operative and you've activated this, if that operative is not fought, it gets to shoot twice provided it's using a bolt weapon. Shock Assault, very similar. If you're choosing an operative and you're looking to fight, you can fight twice provided you have not shot with that operative. Tactical Precision is great because it creates an aura of blue square around your leader, aka your sergeant, that allows your guys to re-roll their attack dice. Now that's for free, you don't have to use Tactical Reroll, it doesn't have to be a 1, so it's pretty phenomenal on that end. Tactical Ploys, you only have to worry about two of these since you're playing a first point. Only a Death to Duty End is phenomenal that if you have one of your models about to be taken out and be incapacitated from the game, but they haven't been utilized yet, go ahead and use this. It allows them to essentially play one last turn, their final breath, their final stand to try to take down the enemy or hold objectives. They should know no fear, 1 CP. This is great that if you're wanting to utilize your operative because you have so few and they happen to get injured, you get to go through and say, hey listen, any modifiers to my APL characteristic, my ballistic skill, weapon skill, or anything does not matter because my model is considered to not be injured. And with that, that's all she wrote. Now that was my overview for the Tactical Marine Squad, how they're being slept on right now and the power that comes out of this list. Being able to bring multiple special and heavy weapons to the list, being able to play multiple different tactical ploys that you would still play already, and be able to have six operators right out from the gate. I don't know why more people were not playing this list to start with outside of the Death Watch being around. Now, if you haven't had a chance to already, if you've got some thoughts, revelations, insights, feel free to let me know down in the comments section below. And also feel free to vote there or go to the Communities tab, where I'm asking you guys whether or not I should utilize the Phobos team or utilize the Tactical Marine Squad I just talked about today on playing my first enemies on the channel. I love to hear you guys, um, so go ahead and let me know. I want to try and work with you guys and help build this community up, and I really appreciate you guys sticking around here. Again, if you haven't had a chance to, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.